As we learn about three-dimensional figures, we need to make sure that we learn the appropriate vocabulary that goes along with them. Um, a solid is the generic term for pretty much any 3D object. Uh, some of those objects uh, are going to be polyhedrons, although really the correct plural form would be polyhedra. Um, a polyhedron is a solid figure that has plane faces, plane meaning flat two-dimensional faces that are actually polygons in themselves. Each side of a polyhedron is some type of polygon. So some examples of polyhedrons would be prisms, pyramids, cubes, and, and this thing right here. Um, there are other examples that we'll study that are solids, but they are not polyhedra. Cones, cylinders, spheres, those are not polyhedra because they do not have polygon faces. Anything that has any sort of curved surface is not a polyhedron. Let's make sure we know the different parts of each individual polyhedron. Uh, vertex and edge have the same definitions as before, so make sure that you refer back to those previous notes if you don't remember. Uh, the face of a polyhedron uh, is each polygon that makes up its surface, right? It's between edges. Um, and I think you're generally familiar with the flat sides being called the face. Um, often when we think of the base of a shape, we think of it as being on the bottom. You have to be careful though, polyhedrons can be turned on any side, and while the base may not actually be on the bottom, it's always going to be the part that's perpendicular to the height. If you're looking at a prism, there are two congruent bases, so that also helps you identify which is the base. Um, other faces are called lateral faces or maybe the lateral surface. So the faces that are not the base, um, and if you have a prism, the faces that connect the bases are called the lateral face. So speaking of prisms, here's the definition. A prism is a polyhedron that has two parallel congruent bases. The bases can be any polygon. The other lateral faces are parallelograms. Now that may seem strange, but so may this example here on the left. This is an example of what's called an oblique prism. Don't worry, you, need to, you don't need to know that term oblique. But prisms can look like this, where the bases are parallel to each other, but offset so that one is not right on top of the other. Uh, right on top of the other. When that happens, the uh, lateral faces that connect the bases make parallelograms However, we're going to be mainly focused on right prisms, like these two here, actually on the right side of your slide. These are called right prisms because their lateral faces stand up at right angles to their bases. Uh, their bases are lined up with each other directly on top of each other. Uh, we have some vertices and some edges here. Also, if you notice, the bases have been shaded in a little bit darker. That's a common technique to use to help identify the bases. Here are our pyramids. With a pyramid, it's a polyhedron with only one base. And again, that base can be any polygon. The other faces on our pyramid are all going to be triangles. Those are our lateral faces. The triangles meet at a single vertex that is opposite from the base of the pyramid, uh, and that vertex is often called the apex. Now let's talk about how to name our prisms and pyramids as specifically as possible. Uh, we want to actually give each prism or pyramid a two-part name. Besides just identifying whether it's a prism or a pyramid, and you can kind of look at part two here, right? Uh, prisms have two parallel bases versus a pyramid that only has one base and opposite of it is a vertex. You also need to describe that prism or pyramid with what type of base it has. So you need to make sure you identify what polygon is its base. That name is going to be used as an adjective to describe the prism or pyramid. Here in this example, this is a hexagonal prism. It's a prism because while we can't see the other base, we know there is a congruent hexagon base back here. And so we know it's a prism. The base is a hexagon, so when we change that into an adjective to describe the prism, it's a hexagonal prism. Uh, any kind of polygon ending in G-O-N, you can change into the adjective form by adding this A-L here. 
if you have a hard time figuring out how to say it, or maybe it's not a word that changes so easily to an adjective, you can also say something like a hexagon-based prism. So now we've got a series of do now questions where you're going to be identifying the three-dimensional figures that you see. Make sure to pause and try each one before seeing the answer on each slide. Um, if you look at this figure, you can see that it has two octagonal bases and those are connected by rectangles. So that makes this an octagonal prism. Take a look at this figure. We see that it has a single base and it's a pentagon this time. We can also see that the lateral faces are triangles. This all leads us to realize this solid is a pentagonal pyramid. What about this one? All of its faces are triangles, including the base. That makes this a triangular pyramid. This picture might start to look familiar. We can see that it has two hexagon bases. It means we're looking at another hexagonal prism. We can see that this shape has two bases and they're both triangles. It, those triangles are connected by rectangular faces. That means this is a triangular prism. Be careful with triangular prisms. Uh, we start to see triangles and we want to think pyramids, but as you can see, pyramids are not the only solids that can involve triangular faces. What about this shape? In case you can't tell, all of the faces and bases are congruent squares. That makes this a cube. And remember, we want you to name everything as specifically as possible. Don't call this a square-based prism. Call this a cube. There are square-based prisms, but in those cases, the squares that make up the bases will be a different shape from the rectangles that connect the squares. Now, not everything is a polyhedron. There are other three-dimensional figures, like cylinders and cones. Remember, these are not polyhedrons because they have some curved surfaces. Not all of their faces are polygons. And that curved surface, in these case, is the lateral surface, right? The part that wraps around the base or bases. So your cylinder is like a prism in that it has two congruent parallel bases, but specifically with cylinders, those bases are circles. And a cone is like a pyramid in that it has a single base, and a vertex opposite from that. Another non-polyhedron solid is a sphere. And you're probably pretty familiar with spheres in the real world. Um, but mathematically, a sphere is a round solid figure with every point on its surface equidistant from the center. Uh, and that distance from the center out to the surface is the radius. In this example diagram we've drawn here, there are a couple of radii drawn in, but really from that center out in any direction, the distance is going to be the same. When we're talking about three-dimensional shapes, one of the things that will come up is actually some two-dimensional measurements. Uh, something that will help you find those measurements is a net. Um, it's also sometimes referred to as a flat pattern. Uh, and that's a two-dimensional shape that we could basically cut out and fold into our three-dimensional figure. So we have an example here of a pattern that we could cut out and fold into a cube. Is that the only pattern we could use to fold into a cube? No. But this net definitely could make a cube. And in that net, right, um, each individual polygon is going to be one of the faces of your 3D object. 
there are actually two different types of surface area. So if you're using a net to try to figure out surface area, you also need to make sure which type of surface area you're talking about. The total surface area of a polyhedron is what you traditionally think of when you think of surface area. All of the faces areas added together. However, you might also be interested in just the lateral surface area. Uh, and that is the total of the areas of the lateral faces, right? Not including the bases. So make sure that you figure out which one you're trying to find before you start trying to calculate surface area. So for this do now, we want you to sketch the net for a pentagonal prism and a pentagonal pyramid. And then explain how those nets are different. Here are the answers to the do now. Your nets might look slightly different, but pretty similar to the ones that we have here. On the left is our prism, and on the right is our pyramid. The net for the prism has two pentagonal bases, connected by five rectangular faces. The pyramid, on the other hand, has only one base, and its lateral faces are triangles.